power that has attracted anarchist Amanda Phillips to the Free State Project. Thousands like her have pledged to move to New Hampshire to create a laboratory of sorts for libertarian ideas about smaller government. Live free or die is not just something on their license plates. I mean, they really believe that. And I, I'm sorry, I, I just have to fall in love with it. A state that has live free or die is their motto. I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm enamored. <laughs> In New Hampshire, we have no seatbelt law, but these things make sense. The government shouldn't tell you to wear them, but you should wear them. Ed Sanders of Lancaster doesn't like to be pushed around, and very few try. They tend to give you the right of way. Especially when he's behind the wheel of his Unimog, a German military vehicle. Right now you're getting a Mog's eye view of the world, which means slow. Sanders installed his seatbelts himself. But he says the government has no more call telling him to wear a seatbelt than it does insisting he wear his mittens or brush his teeth. Well, we really don't need our own the second mother. I think one will do. Sanders came to New Hampshire years ago, seeking asylum from what he says was an oppressive regime. You know, I'm a refugee from Vermont. I know what losing freedom and losing your wallet is all about. And he's excited to see the free staters starting to arrive. We need people that will vote in a conservative and libertarian manner to, to keep our freedoms. And we're, we're just tickled pink to see them come here. I mean, this is really a historic opportunity. Um, and I, I don't want to be left out of it. And I think that's sort of the view of everyone else who's signed up for this. Jason Sorens, a lecturer in political science at Yale, is on board. He ought to be. The Free State Project was his idea. The whole American experience is based on migrating for freedom. I mean, that's what, uh, what most of the immigrants who came to our shores were doing. Uh, they wanted a better life, and that's exactly what we're doing. The Free State Project's goal of lower taxes and less government would seem to be an easy sell in New Hampshire. But libertarian social policies might be a bit tougher to swallow, like, say, legalized drugs and prostitution. What libertarians like to believe in is live and let live uh, attitude. What you do in the privacy of your own home is your own business. John Balliars is head of New Hampshire's Libertarian Party and a big supporter of the Free Staters. Why have our criminal justice system bothered with people that are keeping to themselves in their own home? For example, the prostitution. They think that if you legalize prostitution, it would be crazy and terrible. But look at it illegal. <laughs> crazier, more terrible. Jackie Casey, a recent Free State transplant from Oregon, thinks what one does with one's body is no one else's business, particularly the state's. When people say, oh, well, if, if you know, the libertarians had their way, you know, everyone would be on a rampage, you know, throwing you know, bombs everywhere and going crazy, um, and, and you'd, you'd have total chaos, um, I ask them, um, haven't you looked around, you don't think that that's what we already have now? So there's still some skeptics up there, Mary, about well, whether they're going to be able to take control, so to speak. There are observers who say this isn't going to work because there's at least an equal number, if not more, Massachusetts types who are moving into New Hampshire every day. They tend, of course, to congregate in southern New Hampshire, below the notch. But um, those people from Massachusetts may want lower taxes, but they're also used to a certain level of service in education, roads, mm -hmm. hospitals, and so on. So uh, the, the question is, there's a battle for the soul of New Hampshire That's right, right. I now. Mean, in the past, New Hampshire has elected liberal Democrats to the governorship. So then, that wasn't that all that long ago. Wasn't that long ago. So <laughs> th it's going to be an interesting culture clash. Still ahead, does this movement have legs? Coming up next, can New Hampshire absorb the free staters? So number one, take a look at everything again, and it doesn't matter how long it takes us today, okay? Don Lincoln of Connecticut is house hunting in the Keene area, not for a job or to be near family. She is moving to follow a dream. I think it's part of a historic movement, and I really feel that my time and effort now are really going to mean something. A longtime libertarian activist, Lincoln is one of 5,000 people who have so far signed on to move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. I feel it's such an important um, movement that I didn't feel like I could sit by an hour and a half south of here and not be a part of it. Well, 
But just how big an impact 5, 10, or even 20,000 free staters will have in this state is a matter of debate. If you looked at it in terms of vote counts, no, you're not going to have 5,000 people that will make a difference in terms of vote counts, so they're not going to change any election. David Corbin of the University of New Hampshire says organization's the key. But on the other hand, if you have 5,000 people that are so serious about a way of life, about a political philosophy, that they're willing to pick up and move, if they go to a state the size of a million and they become very active in politics in that state, they can do a lot. As a political scientist, I'm very skeptical about the political impact. Um, and the reason for that is that to, uh, to bring about political change, one has to be organized. Linda Fowler of Dartmouth College thinks that the Free Staters may have met the enemy, and he is them. I mean, the core idea of the libertarian philosophy is to be left alone. <laughs> and it seems to me that people who uh, engage in that kind of radical individualism um, are not really likely to be very effective in collective enterprises. Uh, so, you know, here, here are the irony, right? You have a group of people that have a political philosophy based upon leave me alone, moving to a state of people that want to be left alone. Is the reaction going to be, you know, we, we, we don't want the leave me aloneers here either. We don't want anyone here. We, just, we don't want anything to change. But Free State founder Jason Sorens says his group is no cult and has no secret agenda. We're just normal, everyday Americans who are looking uh, for a better life. All it is is uh, a bunch of people who wanted to commit to moving to a single state um, for greater freedoms, lower taxes, less government intervention, better society. A freedom that the copy cruisers of Rochester celebrate year-round, helmetlessly, if it so moves them. Sometimes I wear one and sometimes I don't. Definitely wouldn't like it if somebody told me I had to wear one. Dave Rooney and his fellow riders today, Katie Sardina and Maureen Dusso, are not reluctant to air their views on freedom. And can people in convertibles, do they have to wear helmets? Still, some are unmoved by the government rollback rhetoric of the Free Staters. Democratic leader Peter Burling says the reformers might run hard up against the flinty New Hampshire character. Well, without being corny, it's granite. I mean, we present ourselves and we tend to think of ourselves as being um, um, immutable. We don't, we don't change in the face of high winds and um, the sort of passionate gusts of this or that. Then again, perhaps the Free Staters might draw some hope from the passing of one of the Granite State's oldest citizens. Amanda Phillips of Burlington, Mass., has chosen to believe that change happens. I have a vision of, of a better world, and I think it would be wrong of me to not try to make that vision a reality. It could be utopian, but I have to try. You know, it's interesting, the Free Staters maintain that it has to be the right 5,000 people who move there. In other words, people who are activists who are willing to get involved in the community, run for school committee, run for planning boards, and so on. And they point out that right now in New Hampshire, if you add up all the activists, Democrat and Republicans who live there, it's about 5,000, not even that. So that yeah. 5,000 committed people could make a difference, they argue. Well, the Speaker has a point. Having spent a lot of time in Coas County, far northern New Hampshire, you go into those small towns as a newcomer, it doesn't matter what your politics are. It takes a long time before folks give you a hearing and allow you to participate. So the Free Staters might not be welcome with open arms. Well, we'll they have a little, a few it's years fascinating. Ago. I mean, they want to bring 20,000. Even if they get 5,000, yeah. it could be significant. It's a very interesting development. <laughs> Chronicle will be back after this break. That's Chronicle for tonight. I'm Mary Richardson. Thanks for being with us. And I'm Peter Mahegan. Good night.